Deploying your app to app service is a matter of deploying your code, binaries, content files, and their respective directory structure to the www root folder in Azure. There are several ways to accomplish this. First, as we've seen, you can set up FTP credentials and then upload from your favorite FTP client. This is strictly a manual file upload process. It's up to you to identify the proper files and folders to upload. We've also seen web deploy from Visual Studio. This supports diff only deployment, database creation, transformations of connection strings, and more. The binaries are built there on your client machine and then pushed to Azure. Another option is to use the deployment engine in Azure services, codenamed Kudu. Kudu is an open source build and deployment engine built for Azure. You can pull the source project from Git or Mercurial source control or from OneDrive and Dropbox folders. This will then do the complete build and deploy the binaries into the Azure service. And then finally, we have continuous deployment. This is where we configure Azure to watch a supported source control system and automatically pull changes. This currently supports TFS, Visual Studio Online, GitHub, and Bitbucket. We've seen how to set up FTP and web deploy already. For all the other options, you're going to use the Azure portal and establish a deployment source. Each source has a different configuration screen. If you use TFS, Visual Studio Online, GitHub, or Bitbucket, you can have Azure set up continuous deployment. So here's how that works. When you set up deployment publishing to one of these three providers, you create a connection between Azure and a specific branch in your source control. This defaults to the master branch, but you can select any branch in your version control system. Once this relationship is established, the developer makes a change and tests it locally, and perhaps runs the change through a test system. Eventually, the change is committed to the master branch in the source control. The source control engine notifies Azure about the commit, and it does that through a webhook. If it's the master branch, then Azure will do a pull request against the changes. The deployment engine will take the source and do a clean build against it. It will restore NuGet packages and create all the binaries. If it's successful, the deployment engine will take the generated content and binaries and replace your service contents. Your site will be down briefly while all of this happens. The next request will then start up the website and start your service. Now, if that brief downtime is unacceptable for your service, you can use another really cool feature of Azure App Services. These are called deployment slots. Deployment slots are essentially copies of your service running on unique URLs. The number of slots that are available changes based on the service tier that's being charged, so lower tiers don't support any additional slots. Each slot has a unique URL and IP address. That means it's a different website. You can have different versions of your code running in each slot as well. With continuous deployment, you can associate different branches to different slots. So for example, maybe we've made a change, we've tested it locally, and then we pushed it to a beta branch in our version control system, which deploys to our beta site. Then you can swap your slots. This essentially changes what URL points at without bringing either site down. Typically, the workflow would be to deploy new code to a beta site, test it extensively, and then swap it with production once it's ready for prime time. The production slot then becomes the beta slot, and the beta slot becomes the production slot. The best part of this is that the swap occurs with no downtime to your service. Existing requests are completed on the current service, and new requests are routed to the new code. When you use .NET to craft your backend code, you have complete control over the service and its code, and also its bugs. You can run your services locally, which lets you debug and step through them. But sometimes, bugs really only surface when you're running in the cloud on the real Azure platform. In these cases, it's possible to remotely attach the debugger to your Azure service and do all of your debugging in Visual Studio. This is done through the Cloud Explorer window, which is added as part of the Azure SDK. You must log into your Azure account in this window and then locate your service under Web Apps, right-click on that, and select Attach Debugger. One key thing to remember is that by default, Visual Studio publishes the release build. And in order to debug, you must publish a debug build in order to debug it with Visual Studio. So just change your build type as part of the publishing dialog if you're publishing from Visual Studio. And this is in the settings panel when you display the publishing dialog.